we turn our attention to what's happening on track and it's a combined Group A, Group C Heritage Touring Car Race and this big field of touring cars that raced back in the day led by Norm Mogg in that Holden Commodore HRT uh, VL now zooming their way through turn number one and this is the first of 10 laps for these cars. Did you feel that rumble as they came across the start finish line together on the Brabham Straight there? And, and just look at these cars. We've got all the classes involved, Group A, Group C, together as one bunch. And certainly it is a big bunch. Yeah, very much so. So uh, 25 plus cars. We've had individual races for Group A, which is the period 1985 to 1992 race at Bathurst during that period. We had an individual race for Group C, there for cars 1973 to 84. Join them together now, bumper field. And uh, what a magnificent race we had between Frank Binding and Ed, Ed Singleton in the all Group C event, where that car on screen now, uh, for those who've got a view of the screen, but uh, that car, the Roadways STP Commodore, Elvis, the ex Alan Grice car, driven now by its owner, Ed Singleton, had a ding-dong battle and with uh, the Army Reserve car and pipped the Ford at the post to win the race by three one-hundredths of a second. It was magnificent stuff, but now they've got to contend not only with each other, but with the Group A cars, in particular, Norm Mogg's HRT Walkinshaw. And right there, Elvis is also uh, having to deal with the Group A Mustang. And I'm just admiring how those colours of those two cars are very much the same colours, but there's totally different livery in the way that it's being delivered. Yes, so the Grice machine in a battle between the Group C cars, that's the Craven Mile Tirana, gets ahead of the Mazda of uh, Van Wert. And the Mustang just passed Elvis as well, so that's a change in the lead cars. Norm Mogg is jumping out there. Frank Biding. Then we've got Greg Keem in the Mustang and Ed Singleton. That's our top four. And look at Greg Keem there. He is absolutely on fire saying turn one and turn two. Let me take that on. I'm now going to get the Frank Binding XD Falcon. Yeah, the Army Reserve car raced at Bathurst in 1980 and 1981. It wasn't particularly reliable. Much more reliable these days in the hands of Frank Binding. Elvis, car number 21. The ex Grice Singleton car, this STP car, raced uh, in uh, the mid 80s, early 80s rather, 82, 83, and then the Mustang raced at Bathurst 85, 86, perhaps even uh, a year or two beyond that. We've got to look at the fact that this is race four of this, so the tyres on these cars, I think they get one set of tyres and they're, they've been out there. Now we might even see some sliding happening. We will if uh, the drizzle comes over in the rain, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday's conditions were pretty ordinary, so we've been very lucky so far today. So it's put a completely different complexion on events. Uh, Norm Mogg, look him out in front. He's got a big, big lead, but a big squabble for second, third and fourth. The Adonix Tirana now being actually hounded by the RX-7 there. So I think we've got... Uh that looking good in tow uh, is coming up behind in the BMW very, very quickly. Yeah, Gary O'Brien dropped by our commentary box to tell us uh, what the problem was with David Toe's car. We saw it drop out of the All Group A race. Um, had some oil leaking onto the exhaust. So uh, courtesy of a uh, loose bolt or two, apparently. They've tightened those bolts up. No more leaking oil. David Toe's out there looking to hound some of those bigger cars. And certainly hounding he is as they come back into corner one now at full speed. They get about 200 odd kilometres an hour down the end of the main straight and then into the first corner. Big lock up there in the VL Commodore up behind the A9X. So let's just see how that goes uh, as he heads down to the next corner onto four and into five. Yeah, the lock up from the VL Commodore of Gary Kerwin. And uh, he's looking to put pressure on Tony Sawford in the Craven Wildcard. Ducks down the inside now. That's a change of position. Kerwin now up into fifth place. And David Toe follows straight in. I think you call that a toe, don't you? That, that has <laughs> yeah, worked in very well to come up around. Now, that little BMW is uh, just hounding the back of the VL Commodore in a very menacing way. We're going to see potentially another position change here any moment. Yeah, here's a race winner at the Muscle Car Masters in the past, David Toe. Um, as you could expect, the 
BMW really good through the back section. Loses out down the main straight to the V8s, but uh, look, it's the car to have around uh, the back of the course. Well, the car's out in front still actually powering away there. Norm Mogg doing another great lap. And I'm, I'm actually been itching to say this because it only got announced last year at the Muscle Car Masters. The change of corner one and corner two to new names here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Yeah, Moffat Bond, one, two. That's Moffett right. Moffat for one, Bond for two. So uh, that was upon the 40th anniversary of the famous one, two at Bathurst with the Moffat Bond uh, or the Moffat Ford dealers machine. So, uh, yes, uh, as we can see, the cars go through Moffat turn one. And uh, Ed Singleton fancies his chances the longer the race goes on in this battle with Frank Binding. Tried to put it down the inside into turn two, Bond corner. Uh, couldn't get the job on that occasion, but the STP Commodore should get faster and faster relative to the big Ford as the Ford uses its tyres as the race wears on. So as they come up into the uh, corner four and then into Brocco five, we're going to see, oh, the, the ding-dong battle just continues on there. Frank Binding absolutely holding onto the corners. Fantastic to see Ed Singleton just go, yes, I'm racing, but I'm not going to bang him out. So Ed Singleton for a while ran in this category. Step back. Now uh, present in the category is Terry Lawler, who's not racing this weekend. Terry has a Group A ex Dick Johnson Sierra. But um, so great to see the man who's been pushing the class being so competitive that is Ed Singleton further down the field Lindsay Wallard in car number four and uh, he's got uh, Michael Logitus behind him in the ex Peter Jansen nudge nudge wink wink Commodore it'd be good to get Peter Jansen to the muscle car masters oh, here to check out those captain. cherry ripes and Indeed. nudge bars Indeed. but here we go we've got different eras of Group C cars up here with the XD Falcon, the VH Commodore, actually it looks like a bit earlier than a VH, and uh, the A9X Tirana and then an LH Tirana four-door, it is a VC, look at that. Yeah. So uh, the ability to actually see different eras of cars racing together so tightly like that is also fantastic. And Ed Singleton in Elvis, the STP number 21, be going, well here I was putting pressure on Frank Binding, now I've got an interloper in the form <laughs> of Gary Kerwin in the newer VL. Oh, and Gary goes right up the inside Good there move. of Frank Binding. What a great move. So the ex-Gerald K. Jag parts Commodore in that very distinctive blue and white paint scheme. So a couple of those uh, Jag parts cars running around in Heritage Touring Cars, Group A Commodores, that is. So David Toe now decides that he's going to buy into the battle between Ford and Holden in the XJPS BMW rest in the World Touring Car Championship round at Bathurst in 1990, sorry, 1987. You know, it, it is amazing to see those colours and they were also on the Formula 1 JPS B at the time as well. The JPS BMWs, of course, with the black and gold used to win the top presentation award at Bathurst almost every year. Uh, just because of how good those cars look. Yes, uh, entered by Frank Gardner. Ran uh, in those colours between 1981 and 1987 as David Toe looks like he is slowing again. Dropped off the back. I think he's been uh, gobbled up now by Ed Singleton. Not, no, quite. not quite. So he's maybe he just missed a gear perhaps. He certainly uh, lost momentum for a while there. Now we get to see... Bob Holden's car. Number 45 is in the hands of uh, Justin Matthews. And I did catch up with Bob Holden, and I, I have to actually say to everybody out there listening, if I said 79 years he's been racing, you owe right, Luke. It's actually 69 years. We just added an extra 10 because of his enthusiasm. Okay, so he started as a, uh, in cycling, I think. He, he did. As a, as a youngster, he... Um, he battled, had a club foot, battled uh, polio, overcame that. So for him to still be racing well into his 80s, uh, it's just remarkable. He's just a just a Australian motor racing living treasure. Very much a living treasure and uh, certainly still passing on his inspiration to everyone of different ages, which is great to see. So the David Toe BMW back on the main screen here. 
We look at Frank Binding, and also we've got uh, we've got the Ed Singleton car there. I'm just looking at where we're heading with lap times. We're getting some really good lap times here around the Sydney Motorsport Park using the uh, Doing Circuit, I believe. Uh, it's the Gardner Circuit. Gardner, that's it. Well, it Gardner was a biker. You, you were on the right yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, Gardner. Yeah, the Gardner Circuit, not the full Brabham Circuit this weekend. So, the uh, Grand Prix circuit, so called the Grand Prix circuit because those motorcycle aces raced here in 1991 and uh, through to the mid 90s on the Grand Prix layer, hence its name. Just back on Bob Holden, while we saw one of his uh, former cars and entered by Bob Holden, uh, Bob's own machine, number 13, is uh, not out there in this event. So that's uh, sad, as in Bob's car that he was driving. Yeah, so he, he had some problems. Uh, it was his tail shaft issue. Aha. Uh -huh. That'll do it every time. Meantime, we look at John Minner in the XD Falcon, ex uh, Rusty French car. Yeah, Rusty French certainly has his moniker here with uh, Sky Sands uh, involvement around the sports sedans but Rusty has not joined us this weekend he said I'm looking forward to next year to being able to make sure I get a lot of cars up there and around the muscle car masters. Sole representative of Mazda this weekend in Heritage Touring Cars is uh, Phil Van Wert, oh. the Berkeley exhaust car there he's uh, closely following the Tirana of Tony Sawford the ex Allen Grice car there going a little bit sideways on the uh -oh. corner line. And it looks like we've got the. Okay, so we've got chaos cars. now as the rain falls down. We've got a couple of cars off. There's Gary Kerwin. We saw him making fast progress up the field. He's now making fast progress down the lap charts as he attempts to get back onto the circuit. He will be able to do that. But all these cars on slick tyres, not predicting that there would be any rain. And. Uh, see these cars now buttoned off with three and a half laps remaining. Now that'll make it interesting for the last three and a half laps here as the Supra also is taking a wide run around Bond Bend and uh, we're going to see a lot of these slicks just saying okay guys let's certainly take it easy but maybe some of those who have got drifting skills and have learned something from Shane Van Gisbergen will uh <laughs> we'll, we'll be making it round that is okay. True. If the Volvo's got radials on it, it should be fine. Well, that's a very good question because we were discussing earlier that how it raced on radials on road going tyres at Bathurst in 1979. Obviously, hoping it would rain that weekend, <laughs> but it never did. <laughs> exactly. But does it race today with radial tyres? I don't know the answer to that. I'll have to do some homework. And I was just saying something about the speed at which these guys were going around. We now see everybody is backing right off. And, and going, we're just going to finish up those laps. And so it'll be interesting to see those who want to put the horsepower down. No, it's looking like we're keeping it very, very sensible out there at the moment. All right, so Norm Mogg is still our leader. We saw a glimpse of him in car number seven, the ex-Holden racing team. Neil Crompton, Wynn Percy, Bathurst 89, Walkinshaw Commodore. He leads the event. He has a 13 second lead over Frank Binding in the Army Reserve car. Then in third place is uh, the machine of Ed Singleton, then David Toe, uh, and then we get down to in amongst this group. There's second place. Uh, Having so a Frank little wiggle Binding. there. Frank Binding wiggling that, uh, that Falcon around as uh, just trying to get some grip somewhere on the track. And seriously pelting down on that part of the track. This is where the BMW is going to shine, and no surprise, to see David Toe's M3 ranging up very quickly behind Ed Singleton's Commodore. Ed uh, really buttoning off. So we still have two and a half laps to go. Be interested to see the difference in uh, lap time. The best lap in this race so far is a 144.7, jointly held by race leader Norm Mogg and also David Toe in the BMW. Uh, they would be way off that now, uh, but the BMW would not have dropped as much pace as Norm Mogg. So the lead Norm Mogg to Frank Binding was 13 seconds, now 10 seconds. So Frank Binding having a go in the wet. Yeah, it's always interesting when you look at these cars and then you say, okay, how do I feather the throttle 
Just so on the corners, I'm getting around them, but I'm not actually going off the black stuff. You can see there that even the BMW with David Toe, he's just feathering that throttle onto the main straight here as the Volvo comes into picture still. Uh, but David Toe there going past the Commodore and saying, yes, I've got the ability to stop and go around corner one. Let's see how that all goes. His uh, right light's just gone out, which we'll look at the electricals on that car at a later time. But yes, David Toe now takes a position change. All right, so David Toe moves up into third place. The action, I can tell you at the end of this race, with a lap and a half to go, will be for the race win because Frank Binding is making massive inroads into the lead of Norm Mogg. It was 13 seconds a lap ago. Race leader, Norm Mogg, car number seven, is now only six seconds ahead of the Army Reserve Falcon. So it will be coming into view very, very shortly. And uh, whoa, big tank slapper there for Frank Binding in the oh. XD Falcon. And uh, He's having a red hot go. That's you know? it. He's actually saying, I know this car really well. I, I've actually raced this a lot of times and I know how sideways I can get it before I lose it as Ed Singleton has slid off as well. So he's just holding on to control of that car. Let's see uh, how he gets back onto the straight and will it affect his positions any further seeing the David Toe BMW went past him not long ago. He clearly had a big gap over the cars following him. Uh, because uh, for the 10 or 15 seconds that we were on that shot of Ed Singleton, no car passed him. So here we go, battle for the lead. We are on our final tour of Sydney Motorsport Park and Norm Mogg, car number seven. The car used to be owned by Indonesian Prince Tommy Suharto. The car spent time overseas. He has a four second lead. He can just paddle his way down to the finish line and he will take the chequered flag. Had the race been one more lap, Frank Binding would have uh, fancied his chances, but take nothing away from Norm Mogg. He hung on in very difficult conditions, all cars on slicks, 